He fed them with finest wheat and satisfied them with honey from the rock. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you, and with your spirit. I'd like to welcome you this evening to this celebration of uh, Mass here at Arundel Cathedral. In most years on this day, we would be celebrating uh, our great Mass in honour of the Blessed Sacrament, The carpet of flowers would be here in our cathedral aisle and there would be a procession to Arundel Castle for benediction and then back here again to the cathedral. None of this is possible this year. So it seemed right that we should in some way continue this tradition by the celebration of Mass this evening which will be followed by a period of silent adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. I'm sure you will be able to see on the the steps in front of the altar uh, some artwork that has been done by uh, the children of St. Philip Howard Primary School here in Arundel, um, our parish primary school, um, the chalice and the host, a sort of mini carpet of flowers as it were for us uh, on this occasion, helping us to reflect Uh, and to give thanks for this great gift of the Eucharist. As we prepare then to listen to the Lord's word and welcome him truly present, we call to mind our sins and we ask for mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. 
with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament has left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruit of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how the Lord your God led you for forty years in the wilderness to humble you, to test you, and know your inmost heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. He humbled you, he made you feel hunger, he fed you with manna, which neither you nor your fathers had known, to make you understand that man does not live on bread alone, but that man lives on everything that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Do not then forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who guided you through this vast and dreadful wilderness, a land of fiery serpents, scorpions, thirst, who, in this waterless place, brought you water from the hardest rock, who, in this wilderness, fed you with manna that your fathers had not known. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O oh, praise the Lord Jerusalem. Zion, praise your God. He has strengthened the bars of your gates, he has blessed the children within you. He established peace on your borders. He feeds you with finest wheat. He sends out his word to the earth and swiftly runs his command. He makes his word known to Jacob, to Israel his laws and decrees. He has not dealt thus with other nations. He has not taught them his decrees. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ, and the bread that we break is a communion with the body of Christ. The fact that there is only one loaf means that though there are many of us, we form a single body because we all have a share in this one loaf. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I am the living bread which has come down from heaven, says the Lord. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. Then the Jews started arguing with one another, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? they said. Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. Anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. As I, who am sent by the living Father, myself draw life from the Father, so whoever eats me will draw life from me. This is the bread come down from heaven. Not like the bread our ancestors ate, they are dead, but anyone who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In this evening's first reading from the book of Deuteronomy, uh, we find uh, through the, the voice of um, Moses, God speaking to his people. We find a people who have spent these 40 years wandering in the desert. They had no home. They lived with heat and cold. They did not know where they were going. They knew they were going to the promised land, but where that would be, perhaps at times, we know they wondered. They struggled in their faith in God. They tried to deny him. They tried at times to manage without him. We might feel at this uh, particular time that in some respects we too have been wandering in a desert. We have not been able to come to church to celebrate Mass together. A lot of the things by which we set our store have been taken away from us. Many in our community have suffered bereavement and loss. Many have lived for some time with the symptoms of COVID-19. And of course, there are so many others in our community who are sick at this time as well. We have not been able to visit family and friends. Many have self-isolated. There is something of the desert experience about all of this. We can rejoice now that at the beginning of next week it will be possible to return to our churches for periods of private prayer, a step on the way to that time when, once more, we will be able to gather to celebrate the Eucharist. Perhaps we might feel that the end of our wandering in the desert is in sight, even if we haven't got there yet. Into the midst of these difficult times comes the Lord. He is always with us. The Lord accompanies us 
in these desert times. Even though sometimes, rather like those people of the Old Testament time, we find it difficult to see him. The Lord is always there with us. And it's important for us to reflect that each and every day in the parishes, across our diocese, across this country and in so many other parts of the world, even though it's not been possible to join in the celebration physically, the Mass has always been celebrated. And at these times, our desire to be in the Lord's presence, our desire to receive him in Holy Communion brings with it a wonderful grace. In today's Gospel, Jesus is very clear in his language in the synagogue in Capernaum. We might remember that this part of the Gospel begins with the feeding of the 5,000 and the people who had been fed physically by the Lord and that miracle then follow him around, perhaps hoping that he will feed them again in that physical sense. Instead, the Lord takes them to a new place. He takes them, as it were, out of the desert in which they had been living their lives into a new place of closeness to him. Closeness to him through our celebration of the Eucharist. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will not have life in you. If you do eat my flesh and drink my blood, eternal life is yours. That is the promise that the Lord gives us. And the new covenant in his blood, which takes place on Calvary, that sacrifice is truly present with us again whenever we celebrate the Eucharist. It's the same sacrifice. It is the same Lord who is with us, giving us his very self. And while in times past, even manna, a gift from God himself, was simply physical nourishment, the nourishment that is the Eucharist takes us to a new place, to the kingdom of the Father. It's absolutely true to say that when we celebrate the Eucharist, we are in a place where the barrier between earth and heaven disappears. The Lord is truly present, and because we are one with him, as St. Paul points out in today's second reading, because we are one with him, so we are one with each other. When we gaze on the celebration of the Eucharist, when we gaze upon the Lord truly present with us, the barrier between earth and heaven disappears. We are one with the Lord. We are one with him who walks with us always through the desert of our life. And so as we pray um, each and every day in these, these uh, present times that we will soon be back together again to celebrate the Eucharist, let us take this moment in this celebration very particularly to rejoice in the gift of the Eucharist, to give thanks that the Lord gives us himself. And I invite you, uh, when this celebration of Mass ends, to wait a little while, there'll be just a short little space, and then the opportunity um, to be in the presence of the Lord truly present in the Eucharist. A little bit of time to give thanks for all that the Lord has given to us. A little bit of time to give thanks that he feeds us on our journey with his very self. A little bit of time to bring before him all the intentions that we hold in our hearts, especially those who have died in recent weeks, their families, their friends, and all those who do so much
to care for uh, the sick and the bereaved in these difficult days. Jesus tells us that he is the living bread come down from heaven. Heavenly Father, being one with Christ in our midst, listen to our prayers for the world. For the Church, that the Eucharist may always be the source of our inspiration as witnesses to the Gospel. For those who do not believe in God, that they may know the welcome of Christ and share in the gifts of the Spirit. For our diocese, that through the Eucharist we may be strengthened and renewed in the Lord's service. For all those whose lives have been blighted by racism, may the world renew its commitment to end discrimination and all other forms of ill-treatment. For all those affected by the coronavirus, for key and essential workers, and for all those helping to keep safe those places where people work, study or visit. We remember in our prayers before the altar today the noble founder of this church, Henry, 15th Duke of Norfolk. We thank God for his generosity and implore God's mercy on his soul. And for those who have died recently and for those whose anniversaries occur at this time, we remember especially those who have given generously of their time and support of this cathedral and diocese who have died in the last year. May they enjoy the fellowship of the saints forever. We join our prayers to those of Mary, Mother of the Church, as we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, you give us the bread of life, your Son, Jesus Christ. May our communion with him be one of love for all your people, and may he listen to our prayers through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for ever. Let us pray that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for at the Last Supper with his Apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished Lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith, and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, their foremost merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, 
in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace.
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. To him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just before I give the, uh, the blessing, thank you for joining in the celebration of Mass. As I mentioned, uh, Tomily time. Uh, there will be a short break after Mass and then a period of exposition of the Blessed Sacrament, concluding uh, with um, benediction. Um, there'll be a, a little bit of um, a musical interlude and you'll be able to see the carpet of flowers from last year's Corpus Christi procession. Um, just a, a reminder of um, uh, the wonder of our customary Corpus Christi uh, celebrations here at Arundel Cathedral. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. May he nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. May he turn your steps towards himself and show you the path of charity and peace. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you now and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Um.